Hello everyone. Um, so I'm Yvonne Doyle. I'm the Director of Public Health for London and thank you Anne and thank you Karen for asking me here this afternoon to give you a perspective on compassion at a population level. So um, very confusing, you've got two Yvonnes here today. It's not that common a name actually. But uh, it, just like Yvonne Cockle, I really, I really love London. Um, I, I wasn't born in London, I'm a Dubliner and I've ever, only really understood two places in my life, Dublin and London. And it's a brilliant place to be. And, and part of the reason I love it, and I'm giving you a perspective as an outsider, is that it is so inclusive. <clears throat> it's not that, I mean, I've spent seven years in the south of England. It's a nice place. I really wouldn't want to live there, though, because I love London. And, you know, I, if, if, as I get older, I know the kind of conventional wisdom is you move out of London because it's nice out of London. Actually, I want to, I want to spend my days in London. London as long as I'm around this country so you know I love it that much um, and I love it not just because a beautiful place be but because there are beautiful people here I love the diversity and the energy of it I, I think that's a huge strength and I agree with everything Yvonne says about it that's what makes it great um, but you know there are needs in London and I was thinking about this it's a great opportunity to think about compassion at a collective level because we're hearing some fairly hairy stuff coming out from time to time about the kind of territory I work in so I thought well what does this mean well I'm the public health advisor to the mayor and the mayor has produced this stuff. It's very interesting. It's also very ambitious and vibrant. It's about the kind of city we all want. But as Yvonne has said, um, I'll call her Yvonne C if she doesn't mind. Um, you know, it's, it, it is all of these things. But it, uh, it, as Anne often says, it's also aging now as well. So we've got stuff going on at all parts of the life cycle. People come to London because they want to take risks. So if you're in my shoes, you're thinking, well, how can we get ahead of this risk? How can we control it? You can't control people's lives like that. What you have to do as a service giver, as a commissioner, as a public health leader, is you have to think about how you accommodate this so that you reduce risk as much as possible. And you ask people as well. You ask people to take part in this. And how can you do that if you're not inclusive. You can't tell people, you can't lecture them, you can't hector them, you can't blame them. You can ask them to say, come with us, join us and we'll do this together. We know this is a risky place. We're not judging about that. There are problems as a consequence. You need to be part of the solutions as well. You know, we're, we've passed the paternalistic thing in public health. We know that Londoners are not as content as they could be. And if they're not as content as they could be in other, as they are in other places, even where the economy perhaps is worse, they may not be very productive. So that's an economic argument as well. And then we see certain things here that we don't see elsewhere, but that's London. And one of the things that so is the theme here is the starkness of the inequalities. So you go literally from one, you see around here too, but particularly when you go from here across the bridge, from one street to the next, and you see just starkly different lives. Now, we have the highest child poverty in England in this city, and that is a contrast that worries me greatly. And you don't just, Fred, you need to think about, so what practically can the public health service bring to this and what can it do with its partners about that? So I'd, I'm not getting into the detail here just to show you the pictures but I mean here is the life expectancy in London by local authority area by the boroughs for men and women in uh, this con uh, in London uh, between 2010 and 2012 and you can see the kind of the, the, the dumbbell shape on this and the further down the, the list you go the more unequal life gets the more diver the more diversity it's showing from the um, from the England uh, so we've got places here and, and, and there are people in these places obviously but let's talk about the places from sort of Greenwich down to Tower Hamlets and from Hackney down to ba Barking and Dagenham where people don't live as long as they could. Now you may say well okay it's the quality of life you're quite right that's the territory public health is moving into but I can assure you the quality of life is not very good for those people either even if they are living longer because there's a whole suite of of adversity that surrounds this. So that is an issue for us. 
Then we have mental health. Uh, now we've decided that actually, uh, and we're looking here at the kind of place, and I won't dwell on it too long, but you, we've got, obviously you can have these slides, we've got the diversity, the ethnic diversity, the unemployment, all the sort of, the picture of London as it is. Some of this is not a problem, it's just the way we are. Some of it is a problem. We've got to stop also presenting, you know, certain patterns in the population as problems. They're not. But we do have associations which are strong and therefore it's quite in order to say that we need to give proportionately more attention to people in those groups. So here's my mental health one. Lots of stuff here. We're looking at this as part of the London Health Commission. Is that we have tremendous diversity. We have a very big workforce. But uh, we do have major issues uh, with the demand on secondary care and particularly the expression of serious mental illness in London, but also this level of unhappiness. So at any one time, we've got a million of our people, of our eight million people out there, who are not in a happy state of mind. And you say, well, that's just normal. It's not normal. I mean, I, you know, it's not normal to be going around feeling unhappy. There are times of life when you do. But if that's going on for a long time, that's not a very good thing for us to collectively agree is normal. It's not. And believe me, the, the feeling of joy from just feeling well and feeling well-being is something we all need to aspire to because it's wonderful and it's it's a free gift if you can if you can mine it so why do we accept a million people not feeling like that at least for large parts of their life then we have other interesting uh, uh, challenges we've got the challenge the disproportionate challenge of HIV in London uh, very very um, segmented in particular communities and I want I'm showing you these as our unique London issues because when we come on just at the end of this and we're close to the end to talk about compassion I want to talk to you about the meaning of this because we know what the technical solutions to these things can be you know you can do things about most of this with various therapies with your wonderful clinical practice with drugs and so on but it's what is behind this is the important thing about compassion so this is um, children who are overweight or fat and London has a much uh, bigger problem on this as well fat kids just think that one think how that sounds in the playground and then you'll hear it on Monday is, uh, is World TB Day and we're doing a big push on this in England and in London because it's a London issue you can see it here uh, and uh, we're, go we're, going to, we're going to get under this. I'm absolutely committed for us, you know, actually addressing our TB rates. Now, if we, this is my last slide, if we think about this then in terms of compassion, what are the messages that I would narrate to you and to Londoners in black and what are the what are our commitments in the public health service and our asks perhaps of our partners as well about this so what we are saying is that it is important that people actually that your health is yours it's not mine it's not the public health service not the nhs it's your health and therefore you are in charge and you are responsible you can never take that away from people However, just dumping people in it and taking the, telling them to get on their bikes is not good enough. You know, we are paid here to wrap around people and to give them the kind of support. And we're thinking very carefully about what that kind of support is and how proportionate it should be at any time. I'm delighted we're an inclusive city. We know this from surveys, by the way. When we survey people across this country, the people who are known to be the most tolerant are Londoners. So this is good. We've got an asset here among our population. When we look at things like HIV and TB and other things that you'll come across, and we've got malaria in London as well, got about 300 cases a year. You know, I do, I do see counsellors who I meet a lot this day, these days. Some of them are quite worried. They say to me, Yvonne, does this mean that we're causing problems in various communities? Are there problem communities here? And my answer to that is no. There is no such thing as a problem community. We are here to solve problems together. And we're not making judgments about the cause of this in terms of social or people's lifestyles. That is not our job. Our job is to help you solve the problems together. So we go into this, we have to go into this in a very neutral state and do our best together.
And that's really, it may be self-evident, but actually in the kind of media hype that we get, particularly coming up to big <laughs> events, you know, you get a lot of conclusions that are simply two and two equals five, and they're wrong. So that's my answer to that. Now, the other bits are about mental health. You know, we're very, and I know this is, and I will say this because we get this, is people from certain minority groups are very reluctant to accept the body and mind together. Particularly older women sometimes find this culturally very difficult. And we're helping some of their families to help them to accept this. Also things like screening. So what I want to say is we do need to do what Yvonne says, which is to have more of our staff who understand the cultural norms in our population so that we can offer the best that there is. And there are good preventive services, but they aren't always accepted. And that also goes for the mental health system. Now, what we're trying in London is a movement for mental health to say this is important. It's important, not a, it's important in this square mile where people are jumping off restaurants because they're distressed and they're taking drugs. It's important in communities in Hackney and in East London where people are perhaps suppressing the way they're feeling. This is important stuff and we've got to find a way of making sure that we get, help people to get into that more sunny space but also that they get the treatment they need. We know our children are not fully protected, both in terms of fatness, but also in other terms of immunisation and so on. What do I say to that? This isn't, as people would wish us believe, indolent parents. I'm a parent. It's really difficult not to have your kids fat. I can tell you that from experience. And, you know, it is, you do think very carefully about your immunisations, but I know there's a large nursing profession here. You are absolutely our allies in this. We need to ensure that our kids get immunised and you need to feel confident that immunization is the right thing for them because the consequences of not getting there are you know very sad for children so I would say the services need to respond to this rather than blaming parents but we need to actually help parents to make the right decisions and finally I really am looking forward to ageing in London because it's ambitious I know Andy Mitchell is very keen to have it as a dementia friendly city and I want to know what that means and you know I'm up for it um, and, and this is a great gift we can give to each other it's very simple if we're dementia friendly trained but obviously it's a, a tragic situation and we need to be open our eyes to it and see it and help. But these are the kind of things that I think population compassion mean in practice. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to express that today and um, it's great to be here with you. Thank you.